Hey guys, welcome to Prep Pockets. Hope you are all doing well. Today's topic is longitudinal tooth fracture, which is very important in term of your clinical viva as well as your daily clinical practice. So, let's begin. Longitudinal tooth fracture is the vertical cracks that run along the long axis of the tooth. These extend from the crown toward the root, and sometimes beyond the CEJ. According to the American Association of Endodontists, this fracture is classified into five types, ranging from craze lines to vertical root fracture. We will be discussing each type in detail. Let's begin with the harmless craze lines. Craze lines are microcracks confined to the enamel of permanent teeth. Located most commonly in anterior teeth and marginal ridges of posterior teeth, originating from occlusal and incisal surfaces in occlusogingival direction. These are mostly asymptomatic, having no signs and symptoms, but occurring from high occlusal forces and thermal changes, which is also called thermocycling. These lines are identified through direct visualization and transillumination. Now, what is transillumination? Transillumination is a diagnostic technique that utilizes light to illuminate teeth and surrounding tissues revealing details not easily seen with the naked eye or traditional x-rays. Healthy tooth structure allows light to pass through easily, while areas of decay or cracks may appear as shadows or dark areas. Treatment is only required when a patient has an aesthetic concern, which includes veneers and other aesthetic approaches. Craze lines have excellent prognosis. Let's move to the next type, which is fractured cusps. Fracture cusps involve the separation of cusps from the rest of the tooth. It is most common in posterior teeth and occurs due to extensive caries and deep restorations. These are the easiest to diagnose and may or may not involve pulp. These originate from the occlusal and incisal surfaces, in the mesiodistal and facio-lingual directions. Let's talk about its pathogenesis, how does it happen? Because of a lack of support from cusps due to extensive decay and caries, and after a traumatic injury, like when a person fights, the traumatic upward blow to the mandible results in a sharp impact between maxillary and mandibular teeth. Why does it happen? It happens when a tooth has a deep interproximal decay or a patient has high occlusal forces, or is a bruxer. Clinical features involve undermined cusps with weak marginal ridges. It does not extend beyond the cervical third of the root. There can be a pulp exposure but not necessarily. Common in older teeth that have a small pulp chamber and can involve a single or two cusps. If a single cusp is involved, it will be in both mesiodistal and facio-lingual directions, crossing the marginal ridge and extending down a facial or lingual groove and often into the cervical region parallel to the gingival margin. If two or more cusps are involved, it will be only in the mesiodistal direction. Two mesial or two distal cusps are seldom fractured together. How to diagnose this? Although it is very easy to diagnose, it has many subjective and objective findings to rule out. Patient will come to you with the complaint of sharp and brief pain on mastication, sensitivity to cold, pain when teeth separate after biting, and is neither severe nor continuous. Try doing an indicative test first, like a bite test, which will show positive results. The next one is pulp testing to see the involvement of pulp. For pulp you can watch my next video that will be on pulp testing. There will be no radiographical findings. If there is already a present restoration, remove the restoration first. You can use a stain or a surgical microscope for identification. Treatment involves the removal of the cusp and restoring the tooth appropriately, by using full coverage crowns and onlys. Consider doing pulp procedure if pulp is involved. Fractured cusps show a good prognosis. How can it be prevented? Avoid excessive removal of dentin. Minimize the depth and width of the restoration unless caries are involved. If there are undermined cusps, consider doing onlys and crowns. The next type is the cracked tooth, also known as a green stick fracture, which is an incomplete fracture starting from the crown and extending subgingivally, usually directed mesiodistally. It originates from occlusal surfaces and may extend to both marginal ridges. It happens because of trauma and damaging habits of the patient, as mentioned before, high occlusal forces and bruxism. Why does it happen? Due to greater occlusal forces in the posterior region, exceeding the dentinal strength, showing a nutcracker effect, 
Clinical features involve a mesiodistal fracture, crossing one or both marginal ridges. These are generally shear towards the facial or lingual side of a root surface. There are greater chances of pulp exposure. Wedging forces must be minimized during RCT and restoration to avoid aggravating fracture. How to diagnose this? There are subjective and objective findings. The patient will feel sharp and brief pain on mastication and biting, and pain and sensitivity to cold. There will be slight to severe continuous pain with irreversible pulpitis, showing involvement of pulp. There may be the signs of acute apical abscess, with or without a draining sinus tract and swelling. Objective testing includes a bite test, indicating severe pain on biting. Pulp testing shows no response if pulp is necrotic, and shows a response if it is vital. Direction percussion on the tooth helps in locating the crack, however, there are no signs in the opposite direction percussion. There are no visible signs on radiographs. Radiographs are done to determine periapical and pulpal status. Some other findings help to diagnose it include transillumination, direct visualization, removal of existing restoration, using a surgical microscope, methylene blue staining, and last but not least, wedging forces if segments are separable. This technique helps us to identify it from the split tooth. If a fracture is detected, the instrument is placed in the cavity with moderate pressure, exerted on opposing walls, to try to separate the segments. If no movement is detected, it is a cracked tooth. If the segment is separated, it is a split tooth. Treatment involves only if there is an occlusoproximal fracture that is centered in the facio-lingual aspect and involves the floor of the cavity prep. Root canal treatment is done, followed by a crown. Avoid using metal posts and amalgam restorations. If the fracture is extending through the pulp chamber, extract that tooth and replace it, or another option could be hemisectioning. It shows a questionable to poor prognosis. How can it be prevented? Educate the patient about the damaging habits like bruxism, clenching of teeth. Avoid deep restorations, better to give crowns. Do not alter the occlusal anatomy of restorations. The next type is split tooth, which occurs if the cracked tooth is left untreated. It is a complete fracture of crown with distinct margins, extending from the crown into the middle or apical third of root, showing mobile tooth segments. It originates from occlusal surfaces in the mesiodistal direction. Why does it happen? It happens due to destructive wedging or displacing forces on existing restorations. Traumatic forces on the tooth that exceed the elastic limit of dentine. Occurring because of the compromised strength of RCT-treated tooth, damaging habits of the patient and trauma to the tooth. Clinical features include a mesiodistal fracture involving both marginal ridges, extending deep shear onto the root surface. If the fracture is centered more occlusally, the greater is the tendency to expand it more apically, the greater the chances of pulp exposure. There will be the mobility of one or two segments. These are easier to diagnose. The patient will complain of pain on mastication, however, Teeth tend to be less painful with occlusal-centric contacts than with mastication. There may be a periodontal abscess that can mislead the diagnosis. Objective testing is not helpful in diagnosis, but periodontal and periapical tests are quite helpful. Radiographic findings show a damaged periodontium, horizontal bone loss of interproximal or interradicular bone. If there already exists a restoration, remove that, to identify the extent and severity of the fracture. Wedging of the segments determines the separability of segments. Periodontal probing shows deep probing defects. If the fracture is more cervical, treatment involves removal of the smaller segment, and considering doing a crown lengthening or orthodontic extrusion of the other segment, only if the patient agrees to it. If the fracture is beyond cervical, extract that tooth and replace it. Split tooth, if treated, shows a poor prognosis. Prevention is the same as that of a cracked tooth, which we have discussed earlier. The last type is vertical root fracture, which is very important from an exam point of view. DRF starts from the root and extends coronally. It is often seen in an RCT-treated tooth. It is present in the facio-lingual direction. It happens due to wedging forces in canals. These are some factors that can result in vertical root fracture. 
All of these are very important. The tooth may be painful or asymptomatic. There may be mobility present. Sometimes mild pain on biting, and a periodontal abscess is present. Periodontal probing shows a narrow or rectangular probing pattern. Radiographical findings are very important. This is an often asked question in clinical viva. There will be a marked bone resorption pattern, extending from the apex along the lateral surface of the root. With angular resorption at the cervical root, there will be a characteristic J-shaped or halo pattern. CBCT is required for further investigation, but can be diagnosed on a periapical X-ray, too. There may be a visible sinus tract and a narrow, isolated probing defect. Transillumination and staining with methylene blue can be helpful in diagnosis. Treatment involves the extraction of the tooth, as it shows a poor to hopeless prognosis. It can be prevented by avoiding excessive removal of intradicular dentin, by minimizing the internal wedging forces and condensation forces. Use a flexible post to build a foundation. These are the important questions related to longitudinal fractures that are commonly asked. If you want answers to this question, comment below. I'll put the answers in the description box. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, like it and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe our channel if you want more detailed lectures. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. See you in the next video.